Hey everyone, Alex here. Today I'm going to tell you 10 things that you can do in Otaru, Japan. We stayed in Otaru for just one night after a ski trip, and if you're wondering where we stayed, we stayed at a hotel called Family the Green Otaru. We needed something cheap and walkable to the train station, and we think that this hotel did a great job. It was also within walking distance of a lot of things that I wanted to do while we were there. So let's dive into it. Number one, Otaru Danuki Koji. This quiet alleyway is filled with lots of little yakitori and ramen shops. It's a great place to go for dinner, but be careful because a lot of places close between 6 and 8 p.m. So get there on the early side. Number two, sample Japanese whiskey. We did a whiskey tasting at this bar called Nika Rita. It's one of the only places in town that's open past eight and it closes at 10. Nika whiskey was developed by the father of Japanese whiskey and his name was Takatsuri Mazataka. And this bar is named after his wife who's from Scotland named Rita. Number three, walk along the Otaru Canal. During the day or night, this canal is a cute little walk that you can do. During the nighttime, it's all romantic with the lanterns reflecting off of the water. This canal was built in 1923 to allow small ships to transport goods to all of the warehouses. In the 1980s, it was actually slated to be filled in, but thanks to a citizens movement, it was restored and all the old warehouses turned into museums, shops, and restaurants. Number four is one of those restaurants. It's called Otaru Beer Warehouse, number one. This German style beer hall brews German beer in Otaru. This place has a lively atmosphere and has a little gift shop where you can buy the beer to take home. Number five is taking a walk along the Sakaimachi Hondori Street. This is a really great place to walk around during the day, especially because all of the restaurants and little specialty shops will be open. We were there during the nighttime and it was extremely quiet because everything closes around five or six. But I will say that it was very peaceful and that you still get a chance to appreciate all of the older architecture along this street. The sixth thing that you can do in Otaru is go to the Sankaku Market near the train station. This is a great place to get some local seafood. Otaru is also known for glass and you can buy some great souvenirs at one of the famous stores called Kitaichi Glass Otaru. Right on Sakaimachi Hondori is a famous French pastry shop and that is called Le Tao. If you're in Otaru, it's probably freezing outside, so there are some great museums there that you can spend time inside and warm up a little bit. There is a stained glass museum, the Bank of Japan Otaru Museum, and the Otaru Museum of History and Nature. The last thing that I recommend that you can do in Otaru is take a cruise down the historic canal. There's a company that will do day and dusk cruises and they last about 40 minutes. Otaru seems like a really quaint little town and we're glad that we stayed there for the night just to walk around and explore a little bit. I think there's definitely a lot more to do during the day since most of the places I wanted to go to closed at five or six. There is some charm to be seen when walking around at night though, because everywhere we went, it seemed like there were these little snow buildings or snow sculptures that people have built and there were lit candles in all of them. So as you're walking around the streets, you just see these little glimmering candles and it was really cute. It was like kind of winter wonderlandy. So that made Otaru pretty unique in my book. I hope this helps you plan your little trip to Otaru and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.